Well, we want to say welcome to the Glory Generation. I'm Pastor Greg Brown. This is Pastor Don Brown. We're coming to you from Goodyear, Arizona, Skyway Church on Goodyear, Arizona. And we have a tremendous show for you today, some tremendous guests. Many people experience things in life that could become a hurdle that's so big, you think, I don't think I'll ever get over this hurdle. But you know what? With God, all things are possible. And the guests that we have today are going to talk about how they've overcome the hurdles. And so let's welcome Dr. Don D. Nettles and Marcy Nettles. Welcome to the program. We're glad you're here with us today. Thank you Thank so much. You. We're honored. And, and Marcy, we are just excited about the story you had telling us about, you know, being a police officer. And then all of a sudden you had some physical issues and it led to some major emotional things going on. Pastor Don, you want to visit with her about that? Well, what I really love about you guys, and I've told you this before, is you're just you're so passionate about life. Yes. And the struggles that you've been through, you know, the, the loss of jobs and marriages and different things, those things can take people out and it takes passion away from people. But as I look at you, there's no loss of passion no, in you guys. Not at you all. You guys are amazing. And so what I want to convey to everybody is, yes, there can be tragedies in your life, but through God and surrender to God and through the glory of God, there's passion and he can spark that renewed love and hope back in you. And Marcy, I want you to talk about that a little bit. What led up to getting back to passion in life? Absolutely. Thank you. You know, one thing that I'd really like to hit on too is that, you know what? Tragedy is part of life. It is. And it's a matter of the choice that we make on how we're going to handle that tragedy, tra tragedy <laughs> and where we're going to go with it. Because you can choose to let it take you down or you can choose to have it create passion. You know, I see on your Facebook post, not Facebook, on, just on your emails, the very bottom line says, it's a good day, it's your choice. Yeah. And I see that you live that out. It's a good day, it's your choice if you want it to be or not. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think a lot of that just comes from our history, our background, where we come from, what we believe, whether it's what we believe about ourselves, what other people have placed that belief mm. in us, um, or just, belief in general. Is, is there a God? Is there somebody that truly loves me just because? What is my value? Do I have any? Where in all reality, our value was placed on us at our creation by God. That's good. And there is no one here on this planet right. that has the right to be able to place a lesser value on us. Amen. They try. They really try. They and certainly I, do. Yeah, they and certainly I love that do. you pointed out that it's, it's your not value, it's not their place. They can't, right. they can't take it away. I love that. No, they absolutely can't. But things can happen that can put you into a situation to where you lower your own personal value. And that's pretty much what happened to me. Um, I've always been that type of person, type A, needed to be in control, um, wanted to know how things were gonna turn out before it even happened type thing. And I believe that's probably part of the reason why I became a police officer in the first place. Um, in the academy, it was awesome. They asked us, so why do you wanna be a police officer? Everybody around me was, because I want to help people. And I'm sorry, I didn't say that. <laughs> it wasn't my ultimate reason. It was because I needed excitement, I needed challenge, and yet ultimately still helping people. Um, along those lines. Um, so I was a police officer for almost 10 years um, when in August of 2009, um, this whole God being the ultimate orchestrator started in play. I was in a car accident on duty that ended my career. Uh, I ended up with several injuries that required surgery and so I wasn't able to go back to being a police officer. And right there, that was my identity stripped from me. Wow. At least the identity that I believed was me. Yes. Uh, and having that removed without my permission, mm -hmm. being type A, that was not okay. Mm -hmm. And so that really started playing a lot of mind games with me as well and my value, what my purpose was. Did I have purpose? So with the injuries, I also had a brain injury, uh, it's so my mind was not working properly. Wow. And I was on a lot of prescription medication that that alters our thinking, it, it alters our personalities. Um, and there's warnings on those prescription medication. Antidepressants may cause suicidal tendencies, and guess what? Yeah. I attempted suicide four times. Oh my goodness. And it was not because I did it wrong that I wasn't successful. It's because I had a higher purpose and God knew God that there was a reason you. for me to be here. Amen. That's a powerful statement right there. And you know, I even feel just a pause and I don't want to interrupt your, train, your thinking right now, but when you said that, I felt something that there's somebody watching the program today and you feel like I'm thinking about suicide. 
And we just want to encourage you that God has reached out to you by having the program on today for you to watch the program and that you have a purpose. God has a purpose for you, and it's not to commit suicide. And we want the blessing of God that our sister's talking about to flow into your life. And so stay with us and keep going because God has a plan for your life. I just felt like we had to say that right then and there, brother. Absolutely. Go ahead. Well, and just one last thing that I'd like, a point that I'd like to make on that. You know, speaking about committing suicide, being in that situation and just admitting it to anyone is hard. Yeah. It's difficult. And when I first started sharing my story, it was embarrassing. And so I hesitated, but once I was able to get over that and was able to start sharing my story, where I was at and where I am now, it does. Other people are there and they just have to understand that it's not who they are. That's, That's right. not why they're having these feelings. Why they are having these feelings is because of outside influences. Yeah. And so once we understand that, again, we get back to that choice. Amen. You can choose to fall into it or to give it up to God. Praise God. And we're glad you gave it up to God. Mm, me too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> me too. You know, I'm just watching Dondi as you tell your story. It's just, it breaks your heart, doesn't it? You love her so much. It and just to, to know that she went through these things is very difficult for you as a, as a husband. Because I've never seen that side of her. Yeah. I don't know. That's, I, I don't know that side of her. The only side I know is that, that driven person, that, that person who loves to help other people. But I feel incredibly blessed to having hear, hear her say that story. And I get, I get the same way every time I hear it, that he brought her through that so that she could bless my life the way she does now. And we can feed off of each other because I know that's not the kind of person she is. And she, she does everything she sets her heart to and sets her mind to. And the only way she could have been through one suicide attempt unsuccessfully, let alone four, <laughs> was the glory of God holding her Amen. And, and bringing her through for the things that she has, that she's accomplished thus far with us together and the thing that, we're, that, we're, that she will accomplish into the future. So I just feel incredibly blessed yeah. that he let her stay here. Amen. That. Yeah. Mm, Amen. Most definitely. Well, and you know, one of the things about being in that situation of attempting suicide, it's also another control thing. Yeah is that having to be in control of your life and whether or not it's good enough, you're making that decision. And so um, I was very broken. I was at a bad, bad spot. Uh, it created problems in a marriage that was already not good. Uh, and my poor children witnessing a lot of this as well. And so there's always the, the aftermath yeah. from that as well. And so getting to that point to where finally seeing a bit of light, a glimmer of hope. You know, thankfully I had friends that thought about me and they brought me into opportunities that changed my vision of my purpose and hope for my future. Amen. So I think it's very important that if there is people that are watching us right now that are having those feelings, go to your friends. That's they good, love you. That's good advice. They just don't know what's going on entirely with you. And so just open up, be willing to share how you're feeling. <laughs> because there's a whole different world out there just waiting. Yeah. Wow, it's powerful. It is powerful, it? it's very powerful. <laughs> and so as you reached out and God started working in your life, you, you're making it through, what were some of the first things, the initial things that you felt like were changing for the better? Mm. Ultimately, being able to give up the need for control. Okay. Because I was not a good chooser for myself mm. at all. I made very poor choices in my life. And I know, I mean, thinking about it just even this morning, I know it's because I did not have a true belief in the love of God, how he loved me. Wow. And I also know it's because I did not know my ultimate purpose, okay. that it was something that I had to instill on myself or that other people put on me. And so now with that understanding and that realization that my value was placed on me, on my creation, mm. by one, Amen. God. So understanding that, it's, it changes everything. Because just being able to write down on a list and say, if you ever want me to be in a relationship, this is what I need. And I was very specific and giving it up to him. Yes. 
And gosh, I didn't even put on there I needed my own personal chiropractor. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Seriously, but it works out perfectly for me. I mean, who else can say that they have an adjusting table in their bedroom? There you go. Right? <laughs> Amen. And so, so as you surrendered to God and just started experiencing his love, I think when you said that, that there, it was like the light came on that God really loves me. And so when that love came in, how did you feel? What was going on inside of you? It was like this foreign entity called love, uh, love from God coming in. What was going on when you started experiencing it? Peace. Amen. There you go. Because yeah. once you're not in complete conflict with yourself and what, the, what your ultimate purpose is, it's peace. Amen. Because any choice that we try to make for ourselves that does not go along the line of the plan that God has for us, there's turmoil. Yeah. So if we just decide to give it up to that line and what our purpose is, there's peace. So the peace of God just began to flood into your heart mm -hmm. and you felt his love and you knew you were a loved daughter. Yes. You know, and that's, that's what the glory generation really is all about is that we are loved sons, we're loved daughters. And we're not trying to convince God that we're worth being loved, yeah. but we just experience it. Isn't that great? It's amazing. <laughs> And it's not based off of, you know, day to day. Yeah. It's in every moment, every second Amen. thing. That's great news. That is great. Well, Dondi, you've been through quite a bit in your life as well. And I think you had some of those same control issues. Not that I'm putting something on you, but <laughs> from our conversations that we've had, that is something that you also needed to let go. So what was your process like? Very, very similar. Um, also being a driver, a type A, that I uh, was brought up that if it's got to get done right, it has to be done by me. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's the philosophy I've always had. And in, in business and going to chiropractic college and trying to figure out my way in, in the, I, I changed my major in college seven times, trying to figure out where I knew I wanted to help people. I knew I wanted to be successful. I knew I wanted to provide for my family. What I was struggling with was the surrender to what God wanted me to do versus what I thought I wanted me to do. And it, I just kept ending in dead ends. And, and when I realized that when chiropractic was it, and I was called into that, and I feel, firmly believe that, and it was something that became very clear and for me to set my mind to it. And then, but once getting out of chiropractic college, starting my practice, moving from California where I was born and raised here, um, everything was going very, very well. We had a very successful practice and, and, and lots of things were happening in a positive way. And it was, but at the same time, I was so committed to that, it became my identity. Uh -huh. Becoming a successful chiropractor became my identity rather than being a Christian husband and a Christian father. Wow. And I get very emotional about it because it was something that I had the highest highs and then in a very short period of time, the lowest lows yeah. when everything was taken. And it was because I just wasn't surrendering because it was when things were good, I, I spoke with God less hmm. than when I was in crisis. And I realized that it was because of my, my commitment, my, my, and, the, and I love being committed to something, sure. but I realized I had to surrender. And, and the, w when it all happened and, and it, I felt my, like my life was like a snow globe mm. where you just shake it and everything was in complete chaos and turmoil. And I just had to get to the lowest place and just get on my knees and surrender and said, I got, I can't do this without you. You clearly want something for me. I don't know what it is. And I had to stop my own voice and just listen. And I'm not a good listener sometimes. And I just had to listen. That's and right. that brought me, and I was already a, a member of the church family here. Sure. And the programs that they had here to, with, with Pastor Sam and the Freedom for Life program that I went through and the, the SALT program with Fred and, and Valerie Payne, coming through that, I started to becoming very clear that I, I knew I had a purpose. I always felt that I did, but I was directing it rather than being led. Oh, and I man, finally, for good. the first time in my life, I said, God, just lead me where you want me to go. Um, I'll get my head out of it, get my heart into it and just completely surrender. And like Marcy, we, we, we laugh about this. I, I made a list too. I made a very, very specific list. I mean, not like eye color, hair color, things like that, but character traits, core values. Yeah, that's good. And when God brought us together, it was such that it was a very surreal, surreal moment, but it was almost like I got the cake and God said, no, I'm going to give you what you asked for. And I'm going to put icing on the cake, your favorite flavor. <laughs> and here she is. Isn't that beautiful? I remember, you know, the time in your life when you were letting go of the practice and of those things. It was very, I mean, because you were married to your practice. Yeah. You basically, I went to, I saw, you know, I went in there and it was beautiful. You, yeah. you did a great job with your practice, but it was, it was all consuming and it, it cost you a lot. Yeah. It, it clouded my vision yeah. um, because I thought that ultimately that, that was 
the, the, what defined me was my, my practice, my being a successful practice, which led to a radio show. And that even compounded the problem. I think it, it there was ego involved. In, and one of my patients, um, came to me one day and, uh, and God bless her. She just said, Dr. And I was like, I want to tell you something. And obviously it was, she was on a mission from God to give me this piece of information, but she said, ego means edging God out. Wow. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Wow. And she just hugged me and turned around and walked away. Wow. No solicitation just came yeah. up and said, ego means edging God out, hugged me and walked away. And that was one of the most profound lessons I've ever learned because I didn't think I did have an ego. And then I looked at all the things that I was basing my value on and, and, and I realized it was completely ego driven and it started with a a good intention and purpose, but I lost sight of it. And, and it wasn't until I was at my lowest low that I realized the significance of that and just ultimately surrendered and said, okay, God, I know you've, you have favor upon me. You, there's blessing here. Show me where I'm supposed to go. And what did that look like when he showed you? It was, uh, it was unfamiliar. I have to be honest because it was something I was in tr- full, but I had got to a place where I said, okay, I'm going to full, full trust. And then it became very clear what it was and, and where my, where my life would go. And there was as, and I don't, because we have very similar stories. When we got together, we knew it was meant to be. Yeah. We just didn't know what that was going to look like. And every day was a new discovery and every day was a new blessing. And it was just that simultaneous walk of complete surrender. Amen. And you said that you were learning to listen. And, you know, when I was listening to what you just spoke about, what was it like hearing the voice of God for you? It was direction as such. It was overwhelming because when I was at that place, I was still dealing with unworthiness and that somehow this was my plight that, and then I realized, no, that's just the enemy trying to get in at this place where I'm becoming transitional and vulnerable. Um, but it was overwhelming because I felt such a strength of love. And it was almost like, I guess the best analogy, and it's very difficult to put words to it. It's like being in a hot tub that it was just this warmth that surrounded me and was all embracing. But it was like Marcy said, it was peaceful and it was just, and I kept hearing it's okay. It's okay. It's me. I kept hearing that all the time. It's okay. It's me. And I knew exactly who the voice was. I had just never been talked to before. Or maybe I, 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 I get McFly moments, like if you remember the <laughs> 80s movie, yeah. um, where God will just knock me on the head saying McFly. He was there the whole time. There yeah. was just so much chaos and other frequencies in my life that I wasn't there to listen. And when I finally listened, it was very clear and very loud, um, but reassuring, loving, and all-encompassing. And I felt the tr- most significant peace I've ever felt. Amen. And we see it on you guys. Yeah. And you know that's why we wanted you to be on our program, because a lot of people are in places like you've been, but you have such a great message and a great story about being able to listen and hear from God, being able to break free from the other voices. And both of you summed it up saying, we found out that God really loves me and that God's love touched you and changed you. And we see the evidence of that change in your guys' lives today. It is tremendous knowing both of you. I wanted to just take a few minutes before we wrap up today's program, visit with the folks in the audience, and let you guys know that as you've listened to Dr. Nettles, you listened to Dondi and Marcy, and you've heard their story, maybe you're out there and you're saying, man, something happened to me that I wasn't expecting. And you're saying, hey, I'm a type A person, and I've made everything happen, and now it's not happening. It's happening the wrong way. What's going on with me? You heard their story. Both of them said they realized that God loves them. Friends, God loves you. you. That's what this program's all about. Not to give you a head knowledge about the love of God, but a heart knowledge. We want you to have that heart knowledge that deep down inside, God created you to love you. And for you to know that love, experience that love, let that peace put all that distraction, put all the distractions away, put all the confusion away, all those types of things. He wants to drive that out. And I just feel like right now I want to encourage you to pray with me. If you're feeling touched by this program, that you would just simply bow your head and say say these words with me. Dear Jesus, I need your help. I need your help like you helped Dr. Nettles, like you helped Marcy. You helped them. Help me. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and I ask you to free me. Free me from everything that's edging you out. Free me from confusion. 
Give me your peace. Father, as my friends have prayed this prayer, I ask for your glory to pour over them. I ask for your grace and your forgiveness to fill them. I ask for your goodness to surround them. And even as both of our guests have spoken today, let your peace fill their lives, their homes, their hearts in a tremendous way. And let everybody who's joining us today become a part of the glory generation. Thanks for joining us today. And thank you both for being on our program. Absolutely. God bless you. What a privilege to be able to interview you. That's good. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Greg Brown. I want to talk to you about the new book, Into the Glory. This is for all you glory carriers out there saying, how can I receive God's glory? How to receive it, how it's imparted into your life, and be a carrier of God's glory into your generation. You're going to read about the miracles. You're going to read about the power. It's all biblically based, and you're going to be able to be doing the works of Jesus. I'm telling you, this is an amazing book to be a glory carrier. Thanks for joining us, and read the book, Into the Glory.